Georgi Stoichev, a Bulgarian ultra cyclist, set a new World Ultra Cycling Association cross-state record traversing from south to north across the state of Maryland on the east coast of the United States. In an official time of 7 hours and 25 minutes, Georgie averaged 18.7 miles per hour after battling strong winds and gusts up to 25 miles per hour from the very start of his ride. It was a beautiful route with an awesome support team and an end result that Georgie can absolutely be proud of for years to come. In this episode, we'll chat with Georgie about his nutrition, preparation, crew, performance metrics, and much more. I'm your host, Justin Tu. Let's roll. Hey, Ultra Family, Justin Tu here, your host of the Ultra Cycling Show. Thanks for tuning in for today's special race report from Georgi Stoichev, one of our previous guests. Georgi, thanks for joining me on the show again. Thank you. Thanks for having me back. Big congratulations on your recent record setting on September 19th. You did the Maryland cross-state record, south to north. How did that all come about? Yes, sure. Well, um, you know, my biggest goal this year was uh, transcontinental. That was going to be my first multi-day race unsupported in Europe. Obviously, everything was canceled. Then second race gets canceled. Third race gets canceled. And uh, I mean, one of the things I did, I kept training. I had uh, Andy Jackson from Peak Sports Consulting training me. And I decided um, to just not change my schedule and continue training since March. Uh, as I plan it to for transcontinental and uh, you know uh, throughout the time I did Vero which we spoke briefly about I did the Grand Fondo um, in Asheville North Carolina and I was just looking for another challenge you know I mean I also wanted to uh, bring awareness to uh, uh, the cause of choice which is breast cancer uh, you know I mean just, I just had a lot of a lot of motivation to, to use my fitness uh, and and you know put it to good use. That's awesome. Georgie, well, big congratulations on that. I want to get to all the details of your record setting and more. But first, I wanted to show folks your website, Stoichev Ultra Cycling. We see all of your sponsors there. Also, the cause that you ride for in Bulgaria, right? Sure. Yep. There's a very nice write-up. Foundation is in Bulgaria. Sorry. Oh, okay. Fantastic. And there is a nice write-up that you did on your website. Folks should check that out detail a lot of the metrics and information on your race. Now, I do also have here your Strava from this ride. But before we get to that, I wanted to show folks where Maryland even is and where you did your record. So if we're looking at the United States here, Maryland is on the East Coast, and so you reside around that area. How long was this record attempt? Yes, the attempt was 138.5 miles, and that's one of the things that was uh, uh, very important because I was challenging existing record, so I had to stick within the mileage of the existing record. Uh, therefore, my choice of route was kind of limited. Mm. Um, but yes, so we started on the uh, southernmost point of the state, and you know the state have a weird shape, so you can see that uh, two thirds of the attempt we were actually in delaware but uh mm. according to wuka rules the only thing that matters is that you start um at particular point and end in particular point for the for the attempt oh i see so so is maryland i see maryland here on the map it's on this side and then does it come down yes. on this left hand side of this peninsula precisely ah oh, interesting so wow. it's very weird shape but this is the longest you know south to north point that you can pick right now, let's yeah. see, Delaware, is Delaware literally just this small section here? Uh, yes, because above oh. it is New Jersey. I think there is a ferry connecting both, yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize it's so small. Now, I mean, looks like you did a south to north almost of Delaware also. Do you have any idea about that record? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no idea. Maybe I should have combined both. Yeah, wow, that, that seems like an interesting one to look into. Yep. Man, that'd be uh, two birds with one stone there. So very cool. So you started on the very southern end of Maryland, ended up going yep. through quite a lot of Delaware. 
And then yep. you ended, let's see, you just past Newark, which is in Delaware. And let's see, all the way here at the northern border. Yep, the Mason-Dixon line. Ah, I see. So-called uh, on the Pennsylvania border, yep. Okay, so 138 miles, if we zoom out for those familiar with the Race Across America, so that was 138 miles there. Race Across America starts over on this side, goes all the way across there just to give folks an idea. So you'd have to do that about 25 to 30 times to make it all yeah. the way across. Cool perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you okay. know, um, yeah. I was looking into something more extreme, west to east, which mm. is above 400, starting on the border with West Virginia by Oakland, uh, mm. Maryland. But um, I don't think I had the time. The, you, you need more crew. If the record goes beyond a certain amount of time, you need more crew members. It was really more complex. So, mm. I, you know, I had to do something that's easy to put together fast mm. and, 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 you know, just test it because it was my first time. Okay. So this was actually your first record attempt. So big congratulations on being able to achieve that for the very first time. So I'm looking here at Maryland. You said West East. So is, this is, seems to be the end of, of Maryland over here. Wow. Precisely. That's Next a very to, strange shape. Most, uh, most difficult climbs in, uh, during Race ah. Across America. Cumberland, Hancock. Yeah, I see that. Yep. 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 All very familiar. <laughs> so when, yep. you're doing, when you're doing RAM, uh, you're just about the end. But if you were doing your record setting, you'd be, what, in the first 100 miles there? And you still have a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. Wow, incredible. Well, we'll have to have you back on the show for that record setting, perhaps next year. Hopefully, hopefully, yes. <laughs> okay, so I do have your Strava file here. So 138.55 miles here according to Strava. But tell me about the historic relative effort here. 289, and it's all in red there. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not really sure in details but i think um the relative effort compares your recent activities so you know compared to what i was doing uh you know this was pretty strong effort oh yeah most definitely and of course looking at some of the other metrics here from strava we could see that your speed average was 19.2 miles per hour but what was the actual official one recorded by wuka Yes, uh, the official one was 18.7 because uh, mm. the time you see there is 7.12.59, but uh, mm. with stoppage time is 7.25, and I think they're rounding it. Um, right. So, yeah, so I think the official was 7.25. The record was 8.08, .08, so I beat the record by uh, 43 minutes. Nice. Wow. Excellent performance there. Here's the ultracycling.com, World Ultra Cycling Association, or WUCA website. So they... They're the ones that actually uh, offic officially recorded this record setting. And here's some of the information on the website. So as you had mentioned, 18.7 miles per hour, 7 hours, 25 minutes. So that was, that was on the shorter end of ultra races, but a very fast pace throughout the 138 miles. So well done there. Tell me about the intensity of the ride for you. What did that feel like from the start? How did you pace through to the very end? Sure. Well, um, we started at um, 8.29 in the morning. Um, the weeks before, I became half a uh, weather person. Uh, my, my sole focus was researching the weather. Uh -huh. And, uh, I mean, the wind predictions were crazy, and they did materialize. The wind direction never changed. Mm -hmm. So it was a constant headwind from the north, uh, northeast. So in my right shoulder, and um, I mean, right from the beginning, as soon as I um, uh, started pedaling, the the wind was just so intense, and I really wanted to see, um, you know, what my power is going to do, what kind of uh, average speed I can see. Because I mean, before, the, uh, if there's no wind, I have no doubt that I will just not only break the record, but uh, I mean, I wanted to go under seven hours, uh, most definitely, mm. you know, with the power output I had, I mean, I'm pretty confident that in, uh, in no wind situation, I would see somewhere between uh, 22, 23 miles an hour. So, mm. wow. Yeah. Well, even with that wind, which the elements are very much a part of every record attempt and every race, you did an excellent job. So well done on that. I did see that chart on your website. It showed winds in the range of anywhere from 10 to 25 miles per hour yeah 
Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty brutal, you know. I mean, as soon as I left, uh, and, and then the gusts up to 25 miles an hour. So um, surprisingly, my uh, you know the skin suit helped, my my position helped. I was super aerodynamic, and uh, um, I was happy to see that with 70% of my power, I can be uh, moving with uh, almost 20 miles an hour. So I was just hoping to sustain this. I mean, uh, the issue was some crosswinds. There was numerous times where I had to go really low in the drops and hold hold my bike because um, uh, the bike was starting to to shake, you know. Mm, so it was wow. uh, it was pretty brutal, you know, just to hold the bike in uh, in a straight line. Right, and and since it is mostly flat, it must have been uh, you know it really testing your patience and your your focus and concentration for from the very beginning, having to deal with that all day. Um, that's never a nice thing, and I I think that would remind a lot of ultra racers familiar with Ram about going through Kansas where, you know, wind may be okay, but the minute you take a turn, you'll be on that road for 50 miles or more and having to battle some extreme winds just like you had to deal with. So good training, I suppose, for uh, other races like that. But you mentioned the, the skin suit and, and how you were dressed for this. Here's a video from one of the officials, right, at the first feeding point. Yes, Misha took this video. Uh, uh, I used the ASO spin suit. Uh, it was it was great. It worked great. This was the first uh, feed stop. I actually broke the route down to uh, six twenty three mile even sections, so the crew can report on my progress on an hourly basis. We had a two way radio connection. Wow. Um, I was supposed to take three feed stops, and uh, this was the first one. I actually ended up skipping the last one, so I can, you know, beat the beat the time. And be as fast as I can. Mm, incredible. Well, great work. Sounds like you really had things dialed in and had a great plan. So as you mentioned, the start of time is not quite right here. The official time is 7 hours 25 minutes. Yep. And it shows that, that the moving time was about 17, or sorry, 7 hours and 13 minutes. So just about 10, 10 or 11 uh, minutes there, I guess, off bike? Uh, yes. Well, it was 2 minutes. The rest was stop signs i counted above oh. 35 stop signs and then lights and you know by wuka rules mm -hmm. you have to stop each time and that was uh you know the biggest time loss actually i mean um, i was really pleased just two natural breaks maybe 30 seconds one one minute and then another minute for two uh feed stops so everything was super efficient uh, you know i cannot be happier than this mm. very cool so what did you do tell me about your preparations for the record attempt, not just in terms of your training, but also just the logistics, but also, as you mentioned, taking those fast stops. Is that something that you're just used to from all of your other races? Or is it something specifically that you train for to be able to save all that time and reduce the amount of off, off bike time? Sure. Well, um, I mean, yeah, I do train. I do train uh, to, to go along. Uh, typically, um, I will do a 60 miler or a 120 miler and I will just have uh, one or two stops just briefly and just continue pushing on just so, uh, you know, I can get accustomed to it. But I mean, it's nothing new to me as long as I have enough, um, you know, food and liquids with me, uh, you know, I have no issue just keep going. I don't, I don't need to stop. So it worked out. The hydration worked really well. The, the nutrition worked really well. I went all liquid. A week in advance, I switched to Ensure. So the plan was really to take um, one bottle of Scratch and one bottle of Ensure per hour. So I actually had two bottles of Ensure poured into one water bottle and then two bottles with Scratch. So this was supposed to last me two, two and a half hours, three stops. And that was pretty much the plan, very simple. Okay, so it sounds like you had three water bottles then, is that correct? Yes, one was full with Ensure, two bottles of Ensure, and the other two was Scratch. Oh, I see. Okay, I see what you're saying. So plenty yep. of calories and nutrition from the Ensure in two of the bottles. And were those the two here on the back saddle? Correct. And then the one on the frame is actually an uh, aerodynamic mm. bottle. So, you know, I had to do it. Yep, there you go. Oh, you okay. can see it there better. And then, uh, I mean, I removed all the bags. I did leave the, uh, the frame bag because my radio was there. Otherwise, I was going to remove that too. The crew had a um, uh, spare wheel set in the car in case uh, I get a flat tire and so on. 
like you did ask about the, the logistics and the crew. I had two uh, crew members, uh, Shab and Hamid, um, and then Misha was the official. Uh, you know, we rented the car the day before. We slept in Salisbury, which is a 40 minute drive north from the start point. And, uh, you know, we had to have all the signage, the amber lights, uh, the caution bicycles uh, sign on the back. And I mean, they were just awesome. They did a great job uh, communicating with me, keep, keeping me, uh, you know, keeping me motivated on the radio uh, and so on. So it was, it was perfect. Hmm. Now you mentioned your radio. What kind of radio are you using? Is it something standard in ultra cycling? I don't think so. I mean, most guys are using, uh, they, they were using Terrano and now they're using Verts, uh, I will butcher the name. There's a new brand that everyone is using. I was just using a, a, a basic two-way radio, you know. I just had a headset um, and, they, you know, it worked perfectly because they were very close to me, so. Okay, very cool. So they were actually following you? Correct. Okay. Yep. And are there any rules around that when it comes to Wuka and doing a record attempt uh, in terms of how close the vehicle can be or sure. can they leapfrog you or do they always have to be in direct follow mode? Sure. Um, I mean, there's a lot of rules, as you know. You have to do a lot of paperwork before you start. And when it comes to the follow vehicle, I think uh, obviously they cannot be in front of you because that's advantage. Uh, and um, I think they have to be at least 100 feet behind me don't quote me on that (laughs) um but and then obviously you have to use common sense if it's um um, you can't block traffic i think if um um, three three or more cars uh are behind you and you're pretty much uh blocking traffic you have to pull to the side and let them go Mm -hmm. um you know wide road no traffic sure great but if it's uh, just a one lane road uh you know you have to let traffic go and uh leapfrog is probably the preferred way to do it you know, uh, going through town, lights, you know, leapfrog, uh, you know, we can't block traffic once again. So they, they would just let me go up, up, up the street and then catch up to me. So, yeah, we just played by uh, based on based on the area, based on the road. I mean, uh, it was pretty very quiet roads, very quiet roads. So oh, that's good. Yeah, out. I wanted to ask. So what time did you start the the attempt? What day of the week was that? It was on Saturday, the week after my birthday. We started on the on the nineteenth at eight twenty nine in the morning. Oh, cool! Well, happy belated birthday! How young did you turn, Georgie? Yeah, just thirty five. Wow. Okay, just thirty five and and setting world records. So great achievement. I'm sure there'll be many more to come and looking forward to having you back on the show for any other kind of record you're trying to set. And I know you had the Trans-Siberian Extreme on your your calendar this year. And so I hope you're able to do that soon. And then we'll be able to discuss that as well. Now, I do want to get back to your Strava data. And you were talking about your power. I see Wow, there was even a huge 730 watt effort, max effort um, in power. Uh, what, what was that on? I mean, were, there weren't many hills or anything like that, was there? Towards the end, by oh, okay. I had to just, uh, you know, leave all on the table. Um, yeah, yeah. Something I learned from uh, Bill Russell from New Jersey uh, called uh, uh, power variability. So um, hmm. the beautiful thing, which pretty much tells the story about my pacing, uh, you know, this is the 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 you know what i learned from this race that the uh, the pacing was great the power variability is pretty much um the normalized power divided by the uh, average power so my average power was 197 my normalized power was uh 209 so the variance was 104 so not much variance you know and which which displays perfect perfect pacing i, I stayed within my limits i never dropped really low i never went really hard and uh, the last two hours, actually, my power and speed increased, which was beautiful to see. I think wow. for the first five hours, I was averaging 19.1. And uh, on the fifth hour, I was pretty sure I would break the record unless, you know, I have a flat tire and so on. Mm-hmm. And towards the end, uh, my average moving average increased to 19.3 and obviously dropped to 19.2. But um, it was very well executed. You know, I had enough power to push that 730 must be one of the last few hills towards the end, uh, mm-hmm. once you reach Elkton, Maryland. Yeah, pretty cool. So it seems like you were riding hard and strong, even yeah. 
having to combat the winds. And at the very end, you were able to give it a good, strong finish to, of course, break the record you said by 43 minutes, right? I believe so, yes, officially 43 minutes. Yep. So incredible. So you must be extremely proud of that effort. And uh, after, how did you celebrate? Um, not, not much celebration, actually. Um, we returned the, the rental vehicle and uh, we went to uh, Hamid's uh, uh, house who doesn't live far from me. We just had dinner. Uh, you heard me last time, pizza and beer, uh, no pizza this time. We had a very nice yeah. dinner. We had, uh, we had some nice, uh, nice beer. We laughed, we chatted, uh, you know, nothing, nothing really special, but we did enjoy it. Yeah, very cool. Well, I can only uh, imagine that you deserve a bit of a rest after that, or, or have you been uh, busy training for something coming up? Yeah, you know, um, the beauty for me is in the training, you know, uh, and uh, even though everything is canceled, uh, I just love training. I'm not discouraged. Uh, currently, I'm gearing up for uh, Texas, no country for old men. Oh, I'm okay. 90% sure I can pull it off. Uh, my boss already uh, approved the time off. I'm putting the plant together. Uh, so uh, I hope I can be in Texas in three weeks. Wow. Okay. So that's just three weeks away. And will that be, uh, what distance will that be? I think it's uh, No Country for Old Man 383. The name of the event is 383, but it's actually 375 miles. Um, and now it's open to uh, riders with no support, just like me. Uh, mm. They moved the start to Fort Davis from Alpine, Texas, and they're running a 75 mile loop with 4,500 feet of climbing. So for the 375, I think you do five, five loops, and then they have the 283, I believe. Um, so obviously you do less loops, but it's just a loop event. Awesome. Now, is there a specific time that you're going for or just a, a position on the podium? I mean, you know, um, 20,000 feet of climbing, 375, never been there. Mm -hmm. Texas is rough. Um, I'll, be, I'll be happy with uh, 24 or less. Obviously, you will hope for under 24, but uh, the terrain, the, the elevation will probably slow me down. You know, I'm always fighting for the win. You know, I might not say it uh, loudly, yeah. but, you know, I'm not, I'm not going there just to ride. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give everyone my best effort, and, you know, I'll be happy with any result as long as I give my best, you know. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll be smiling while doing that, just like in this photo. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. A lot of great photos depicting what you were sharing with us. And yeah. it looks like perhaps this is towards the end, maybe on, uh, on an uphill section here. Yeah. yeah. Like Actually, this, this was a face of pain. I don't think it was a smile. <laughs> they were just <laughs> passing by me with, yeah. the, with the follow car. And this is actually the end. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a that's a nice scene there. Nice finish yeah. line scene. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. So tell me, what was your what was your favorite part of this record setting? Um, you know, I mean, once again, challenging myself, uh, pacing well, uh, being with great people, having having a support car with you to support you. You know, raising awareness for uh, breast cancer. Uh, mm -hmm. I had a lot of uh, battles that I had to fight as always and uh, i mean i i like it when it's tough you know uh, i like mm. the fact that there was wind it made it so much interesting uh, on top of that my my sister just went through a um, surgery the tuesday before the event uh mm. kidney stone surgery so you know i had a lot of things to to fight for and uh i'm really happy i'm really happy with the way my body felt the way you know the crew uh, performed and i mean i had no no flat tires no mechanicals no pain, uh, you know, the whole experience was, was flawless. Mm. Yes, it seems like it. And based on everything that we've discussed and everything I've seen, it looked like an incredible time and also an incredible achievement. So okay. again, well done. And that's one for the record books. I think you can uh, safely uh, put that one uh, to, to rust. And we'll see if uh, somebody else uh, decides to challenge you. Any, any strong ultra racers on that end around where you live that you think would uh, try to <laughs> unseat you from, from this record? Sure. Well, 
There are 16 existing Maryland cross state records across all ages and directions. And mine was the second fastest. So you, you ask who, uh, wow. who, who can challenge me? Of course, there's many. Ryan Collins, he broke the record in the other direction a month before me, averaging almost 25 miles an hour. So oh he holds God. the fastest crossing. He, he gave Marco a lot of trouble. Um, I think they were racing uh, in, I think in Florida. Yeah, he was up there with Marco. I mean, he's a very talented rider. He won the Maryland 12, the National 12. Um, yeah, he's just extremely powerful. I mean, his position on the bike, you know, he's getting coached by some of the best. Uh, yeah, Ryan, Ryan Collins. Watch mm. for this name. Yep. All right, Ryan Collins. We'll have to have him on the show. Yep. Uh, do you know if he had a, a nice uh, tailwind uh, on that record setting? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm 25 miles an hour. At least no wind. I don't know about uh, yeah. tailwind, but more than likely he did not have any headwind. Mm. Yeah, that, that was definitely a fast average speed. So do you think you have it on your radar to try the north to south crossing someday? Um, possibly. Possibly, yes. Tough, tough to beat. Uh, you know, and I'm honest. I mean, at mm. my level of fitness currently, I doubt it. My power to weight ratio is not uh, it's not as high as his, but you know, with favorable conditions, tailwind, sure. I mean, my power is just 4.1 watts per kilo. I hate saying 200, 300 because it's based on your on your weight. You know, if right. you're 80 kilos, the same 300 means something else. If you're uh, you know 70 right. kilos, but um, I would I would love to. I will. I like trying new things. You know. This is the reason why I'm going to Texas. I don't like repeating the same races too many times. I'm, you know, unless I'm really in love with it. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, I'm glad you were able to give this uh, record uh, attempt a shot, and you were able to achieve that. That was over here on the east coast of the U.S., and now you will be going to Texas in a few weeks if everything works out to be able to race yep. there. Just thinking aloud. Which other state would you like to set a record in, do you think? Uh, which other state? I love North Carolina. I was there recently and did the Fondo. I climbed Mount Mitchell. A beautiful okay. scenery. Be uh, very, very nice roads. Um, yeah, I think North Carolina, I would love to go there. I love the people. I love the roads. I love the scenery. They have a lot of beautiful climbs. Um, I think I'm, I'm close to the... Um, beach and the coastline so i want to get away from it but like i said i would love to do west virginia um yeah west virginia north carolina all right well we'll be on the lookout you definitely have some good fitness so just a few questions to finish out this episode where would you put yourself on your fitness on a scale of one to ten ten being just superb fitness seven eight okay so Pretty high up there, but still some room for improvement. And I'll, I'll see what, what you end up being after the, the Texas race. But it sounds like you're still very active this year, even despite the pandemic. So that's good to hear and good inspiration and motivation for the rest of us to be able to continue to train. And not just to train to keep some fitness, but even to break some records ourselves. So thanks for leading a great example and sharing your story with us. So for this record attempt, you did a great achievement, one for your bucket list that you could check off. What would you tell other ultra cyclists as some closing tips and tricks, perhaps, for a record attempt of their own? Um, to do some self-evaluation, to understand their limits, their strengths. Obviously, work on, work on their weaknesses, but... Um, um, you know, shoot for something that's within your limits, plan accordingly, spend diligent time, pick, pick, pick crew that you really trust, that really know you, uh, research the route very well, a week in advance, pre-write it, uh, do a detailed um, manual for the crew, just spend a lot of time investigating. I'm all into, you know, investigating, doing research. And, uh, you know, racing within your limits, understanding your body and obviously hydration, nutrition plays big, big role and make sure your equipment, you know, obviously it's uh, suited for the for the terrain. And, uh, you know, don't stop dreaming. I mean, challenge yourself. Don't ever mm -hmm. accept no as an answer.
Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Don't stop dreaming. All right, Georgie, while well, you're 35 years old, you have a lot of accomplishments to your name. And uh, of course, we have you on the record as saying uh, you want to complete PVP, Paris Express Paris, 10 times. So we will be following you for the next decade to make sure that we keep you accountable for that. <laughs> Please. But uh, well done. Here's your crew. Yep. What would you like to say to your crew in your closing words here? That, you know, this is not possible without them. You have Hamid in the back mm -hmm. with the yellow jersey. He's the uh, regional brevet organizer for Northern Virginia Randonneurs. Uh, he's just been so awesome and, and supportive. You have Shap in the front who actually have the highest award in the Randonneuring world from Randonneurs USA. Mm -hmm. She's everywhere with him around the world doing a 1200 case and supporting him. And then, and then Misha, one of the youngest, uh, super supportive, you know, I, they're just, they were just excellent. Super thankful. Oh, that's great. Not only great memories, great achievement, but also great team effort. So congratulations yep. to you, Georgie, and your crew for an incredible record setting. Thank you. I'd like to have you back on the show again soon. And while well, you will be in Texas, so we'll be turning you on for that. Tailwinds for this race this time and we hope to see you on the podium thank you justin hopefully you don't get tired of me i will keep pushing <laughs> not at all thanks again georgie thanks. and everyone watching at home thanks for tuning in hope this has given you some speedy motivation for yourself the year the year is not over yet so it's never too late if you're going out for a long training ride and you're in the area of maryland perhaps you could try to challenge georgie's record Although he did ride very fast, and even with that headwind, 18.7 miles per hour, that's uh, not a slow pace at all. So congratulations to Georgie. Hope to see you guys out on the roads, and hope to see you on the WUCA World Record leaderboards. Until next time, everyone, keep spinning ultra.